Hello and welcome back to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. And I'm Fenris. But before we get into our regular program, there's something we need to bring to your attention. At 10.30 a.m. July 18th, Kyoto Animation's first studio was attacked by an arsonist. 34 were killed and 35 injured. Kyoto Animation is responsible for many beloved classics, such as Haruhi, Kaon, Silent Voice, Chu Tu, Clanad, Dragon Maid, Lucky Star, and many more. Their works are near and dear to many of us. There are a few ways you can help out. One is by donating to the GoFundMe set up by Sentai Filmworks, who licenses most of their shows in the US. Though, there is another way to do it, a more direct way, by following a guide to buy digital prints from their website, and that, that way it would go straight to, to the studio. Both will be linked in the description. This is an unfortunate coincidence. It really is. We we were already reviewing Clan Ed this week before this all happened. Yeah. And we've got several other recordings in the works before this one, but we decided to put this out as soon as possible because of the recent news. Yeah. Clan Ed. I don't even know where to start with the series other than... Should I talk about the first time I watched Clan Ad? Go ahead. When I first watched Clan Ad, it was shortly after finishing Angel Beats. Cause I was like, I want more from Key. Key is good. And I identified with the characters and... Angel Beats. Yeah. And then I decided to watch Clanad, and following Clanad, I watched Canon. I find the series very near and dear to my heart because of the way they depict family in it. As someone who comes from a really close family, it makes me smile, the show makes me cry when the characters cry. I just fell in love with the show. It's like a, another family for me. I had not seen Clan Ed before we started this. I had heard of it before. Uh, when people talk about classic anime, uh, Clan Ad is often one that pops up. But I, being the moron that I am, uh, tend to avoid the often talked about anime. Which for, is fine. For I my do own the same as well. Yeah. I haven't seen one episode of some of the, like, seasonal stuff that's mentioned, unless, like, you know how slime was talked about so much? Yeah. I didn't actually get around to watching it, period, until you made me watch it. Ah. Uh, but... I didn't expect to be as emotional about this going into it. I was going emotional, I was going into the series with emotions from not only originally watching it, but having read the visual novel and seeing both this and after story, I was expecting to feel. So give me what your first impressions were, dude. Before we go into that, though, I'm gonna lay out a general spoiler warning. 
if you haven't seen this, if you want to see this, uh, thanks for watching this far into the video, but come back after you've seen it. It's yes. definitely worth the watch. Even though the spoilers for After Story are abound for most things, if you're adept at dodging them, like Batman is, <laughs> I will not only congratulate you, I will just be so happy if you experience some of the show going in blind. Because it's a treat to just watch without knowing anything about it. So first impressions, yeah? Yeah, what were your first impressions? <laughs> it seemed to be a fairly decent, goofy, chill slice of life. And it is all of the things you've mentioned. I super relate to Tomoya. Yeah, me too. He is my spirit animal. I highly relate to Tomoya as well, but personally, as I get older, I find myself real, like, when I initially watched this, I found myself relating to Nagisa. Yeah? Yeah. Because at the time, I wasn't in class, and I actually watched it a few months before I went back to school after my kidney transplant. Right, you've got... Yeah, I, f I figured you'd relate to Nagisa a bit with the health issues. Health issues, the uh, missing parts, missing major parts of school and stuff like that. Yeah, frequently. But not so much the older I got, just when I was younger. So... First couple episodes, I wasn't pulled in too much. But God, does this show know how to pull a cliffhanger. It pulls cliffhangers so well that half the time I watch this, I uh, watch at least four or five episodes in one sitting. Just to finish up story arcs a bit. With some of the shit they pulled at the end of these episodes, I, like, how could I not click the next episode? Yeah. You lose leaf to this anime? A little As bit. I did. I've lost sleep reading a visual novel. But it's very good at both being heartwarming and suspenseful. Right? Yeah, it kept my attention. In this, not in the early episodes, because those were high key, kind of. Yeah, set up. Epi episode three and on is the good shit. As well as after story, because after story doesn't need set up, because it knows why you're here. So. This show is based on a visual novel, correct? Correct. Not an adult visual novel, I need to clarify that. <laughs> okay. Or is it colloquially known as hentai games? Doesn't get too steamy, huh? Nope. The most you get is a kiss on the- is a kiss where they hold hands. Aww. That's adorable. I know, it, it really is adorable. And the art style in the visual novel is super cute, <laughs> too. So... Yes? This and... show goes through... Hmm. Characters? This show goes through a bunch of the girls' routes, right? It technically, it mushes them all into one, but if, if it's able to, just slices out 
the romance from them. With surgical precision, I might add. <laughs> Tomoya ends up with Nagisa in the end of this, but a lot of that was from... The fact that the anime is following in the visual novel what's known as the true end, which is Nagisa. Ah. Which leads to, into the next season, which we will hopefully talk about sometime. Before we continue, uh, I forgot to talk about the characters. Let's talk about the girls! Or do we want to talk in order? First, I want to bring up Tomoya. Tomoya's the best. Tomoya is a fantastic protagonist. Being a romance anime based on a visual novel, I was expecting... Tomoya to be a bland self-insert character, but instead he has turned out to be an actual fucking character. Even in the visual novel, he has his own <clears throat> thoughts. Hmm. Like, in the visual novel, they cut out some of it in the anime, but there's a lot of internal monologuing just from Tomoya. He's... A delinquent with the heart of gold, and a love of trickery. Sarcastic, cynical... So sassy. He, very sassy. Though he's usually a quiet dude. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which... Kinda makes sense. When you consider him. Like staying out of trouble, but... Enjoys causing a bit of trouble for others. Yeah, don't you remember that one scene? The scene where he, um, tried to convince someone he turned into a girl? Oh, yes. That's the scene you showed me to introduce me to the show. Yeah, I... You, you were not sold when I said, let's do Clan Ed. <sighs> that one scene alone sold me on the show. You wanted context so, so bad. <laughs> Even with context, right? Marvelous. Simply a marvelous prank. Uh, but, so we've got Tomoya, uh, main girl Nagisa. Nagisa Furukawa. Is a... Sort of a crybaby, yet strangely determined. She has a... She has a weak body and gets sick easy, so she's missed a lot of school. Hence, she's repeating. And has no friends there. And she runs into Tamoya as they're both late for school. And they have a really interesting conversation in the beginning, right? Yeah, that cold open. It's just a really, like, interesting conversation, and it gives you an idea of what the two were feeling as they're just sitting, trying to avoid going to class, right? <laughs> yeah. The case is like, do you like this school? And I was like, well, not particularly. Nagisa says she enjoys it very much. But then she says that fun things and happy things that they'll all eventually change. And then oddly enough, our cynical delinquent is just like, find something else to make you happy. Yeah. Which is... Find new ones. Yeah. It's just... That's one of my go-to quotes for, like, trying to motivate me. You know? Yeah. So good at motivating me. Nagisa is quiet, kind, lives uh, with her parents in a bakery... I love her parents. They're so eccentric. 
Your dad kind of reminds me of mine, minus the baseball. <laughs> Replace baseball with video games and D and D, and that's my dad. Awesome. Yeah. Taught me everything I knew. <clears throat> Even watched anime with me from time to time. Um, that sounds but, nice. But back to Nagisa. She's... She's very determined, yep. Which is surprising, right? That she's very... how determined she is, if you've noticed. Hmm. Though she's also very self-deprecating, which I like. Yeah. But Be they all... Hmm? Being around Tomoya really increased her self-confidence over the course of the series, though. Yeah, it's absolutely great to, like, see them change. And they just change so much over the course of the 23 episodes, the both of them. Mm-hmm. No, and I'm not denying that there's more ch there's definitely a hell of a lot more change to come. Mostly from Mr. Okazaki himself. But he's just so, so, so... They're just one of my favorite groups. <laughs> right? Yeah. They're cute um, together. They're very cute together. We've got... Kitomi Ichinose. Ichinose? She is a genius that skips class and cuts pages out of books. And she's, she's an orphan. She's a quiet girl with a... <laughs> with a huge rack? No, I'm, I had words, but I forgot them. <laughs> She's a quiet girl with a tragic backstory. Uh-huh. But it's key, so tragic backstories run in... She sneezes tragic backstories. It's like they try writing a character and they're like... Oops. This isn't sad enough. Yeah, let's, let's try it again. <laughs> it's sadder. We've got the twins. Kyo and Ryo, who runs your sort of typical tsundere, and then the other ones, just sort of shy. Loves fortune telling. Uh, I can get behind that shit. Not, the, not just the fortune telling shit, but my love for the paranormal is great. <laughs> yeah, that stuff's interesting. It really is. I'm too chicken shit to do anything I find. <laughs> but goddamn, if I don't appreciate the paranormal, looking at the paranormal stuff. Ryo is the younger of the two twins. Kyo is the older. She's the tsundere with a few violent tendencies. Kyo's great. I love her. She's my favorite. <clears throat> of all the female cast in this show. Well, Kyo is my at, favorite. She's outgoing, ex excitable, and uh, all that jazz. She's just very expressive, which is why I love her. You know? Yeah. Ryo has a crush on Tomoya throughout the course of the show, and Kyo is trying to get Tomoya to date her. An amazing older sis. She is probably the best older sister character. But in time, she also comes to realize that she has feelings for Tomoya. And when they both realized that Tomoya had chosen Nagisa, that... That scene was heartbreaking. It really was. I shed many tears. I... Th thinking about it right now is making my eyes water. It, 
Uh, oh, props to the animation team, because the characters in this are so, so expressive. Right? Oh. I'm sorry. I Stop making me cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. But yeah, the characters are expressive. Super duper expressive. Batman? I'm good. Okay. Just checking in on you. Yep. We've got the... Uh, this show has some weird supernatural stuff. <laughs> all of key shows have weird... All things done by key have some weird supernatural bullshit. And I love it. We've got... Fuko. The ghost girl. That you can date. In the game, apparently. She kisses you. It's adorable. Okay. But she's a big cutie. She's one of my favorite characters. As we said before, spoilers. Yes. Gonna she's talk about Fuko a lot. Yeah. She's eccentric. Obsessed with... St obsessed. And a bit of a loner. She... Yeah prior to the show starting, had been hit by a car and fell yeah. into a coma. And yet, her spirit moves around the school, carving wooden starfish and handing them out to people so they attend her sister's wedding. Mm-hmm. Not making that up, that actually happens. I... It's like a little slice of angel beats. Ah! Uh. My bad. Such a <laughs> gloomy show. And she befriends Tomoya and the cast, and they join her in her quest to spread the starfish. Mm-hmm. And one of the mechanics of being a ghost in this world, I guess, is that if your body, if the condition of your body worsens, uh, people start forgetting you. So that was... Heartbreaking. Heart-wrenching. Like, in the anime, it starts off just relatively minor characters forgetting her and all that. But then and, Tomoya and Nagisa start forgetting her. <laughs> and then, like, I'm not sure if this is in the visual novel, but this one is what was really hard for me to read, dude. And I'm gonna tell you about it. Yeah. But so, at this stage, it's mostly Nagisa and Okazaki that know her. Yeah. And. Akio still sort of remembers. But then, so he's passing out starfish with, um, Fuko, when Sunohara walks by, and he's like, what you doing passing out these stars and waiting around like you're waiting for some girl? And Tomoya's like, there's one right next to me. And he doesn't see anything and thinks Tomoya's screwing with him like he normally does. And it's just... heartbreaking. You see Tomoya's growing frustration with everyone forgetting, and Fuko trying to communicate to Sunohara. And he's... Um, struggling and crying like I know there's something I should be remembering but I can't yeah that tore me apart uh, so they had something similar like that it may have just been where it took place then if I'm making sense right yeah but it just that scene just tore you apart but finally <laughs> The big day comes of the wedding, 
And no one remembers her. Everyone shows up to the wedding, but no one remembers Fuko. Or can see her. Or can see her. Except for Tomoyo remember and Nagisa remember after looking at the starfish remembering the stuff. And then oh, Fuko wait. shows up and Which is your good sister? Congratulations. And her sister finally sees her. Yeah. Oh God, that yeah, so so good. And the music during that is just it brings you it's also surprisingly happy too, right? Music in this is the score in this is phenomenal. It's one of those things that I still listen to even without playing or watching the sh watching it. Hmm. I casually listen to character songs, insert songs, and uh, anything. A lot of the songs I just really, really love. You know, know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah. Um, it's a phenomenal soundtrack that resonates so, so well with the writing in it. I still don't have the emotional attachment to that Dongo song that you do. Okay, you don't yet. <laughs> I I can definitely see it, but the way you describe it, I'm not there yet. You not cry cries if you hear Don if you hear Dongo for more than a minute. Dongo, 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 Dongo. I love him. I love the dongo. <laughs> I, I love the big dongo family. That's love... a song that Nagisa is obsessed with. And it's actually a fictional song. Oh? Men written by the primary writer and compose one of the writers and composers well technically they're the same person since it was a small development studio at the time i kind of expected it to be just a japanese thing yeah it's actually not it's completely fictional cool and it's just so freaking wholesome right <laughs> Very soothing. It's it soothes me. It makes me feel things. Mostly cause they tend to remix it into Nagisa's theme for the actually for the entire Furukawa family. <laughs> so you get little hints of Dongo. Yeah. Like just peppered throughout all of the all of after story and sometimes you start to hear it in like these huge weighty emotional moments if that makes sense i don't want to spoil any of the weighty emotional moments but one of them involves akio and tamoya and it's just Oh my god, it's just one of my most memorable scenes to me in a long time. Alright, fire sale, let's get through the rest of these characters. Yeah, let's get through the rest of the characters. Tomoyo, Sakagami, she's a ex-delinquent turn student council president with a fervent hatred for... Sunohara. <laughs> the two are like oil and water. The Timmy's dad and Dinkelberg. Sunohara is Tomoya's best friend. They're old sports buddies. 
delinquents that don't go to class for various reasons. And Sunohara got beat up by Tomoyo and sets out on a quest to prove that she is, in fact, a guy. Because no girl can be that strong. That was sarcasm. It really was. Don't take that clip out of context. Uh, Sunohara is your classic lovable idiot. Yeah. Their rivalry goes on for most of the show, but by the end they come to a mutual respect. Absolutely. Which is surprising, considering those two. <laughs> right? Yeah. Also, you don't get this, but what's funny is how they first met. It's mentioned in After Story, but in the visual novel it comes up at the end of his road, and I think it's something I'm gonna share with you. Oh. It starts as Tomoya's in trouble with something, and so he's heading to the office, and as he's heading to the office he sees this doofy looking blonde covered in bandages. <laughs> and he just but he just starts cracking up laughing. <laughs> and from that day forth they were friends. Awesome. It's just such a <laughs> that reminds me so much of like some people I know. <laughs> you know? You too, possibly. It's like yeah. someone who you meet and you instantly become friends with them. Things uh, like that. Next yeah. character. And, Wait, and, we were talking about Tomoyo. Yeah. What? If she's student council president, wants to help the school and stuff. She's more relevant in the visual novel, and she has her own spin-off. Oh. Visual novel, which is not all ages. Oh. But it's also depressing as hell. No. Like everything key related, it's depressing. Stop it. But it's also funny, apparently. Huh. At one point they play a game called Dungeons and Takafumis. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what that is. Hmm. It's actually a mini game. Oh. Seemed like it'd be fun. But I thought I'd mention the simple stuff that we might not get- you might not get to see. You okay. Know? She yeah. also has an OVA about it. So if you love her as a character, I highly suggest watching her OVA. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Also, there's a Kyo OVA, <clears throat> which I assume you'll want to watch sometime. Hmm. Because she is your favorite girl. Oh, right? yes. She's my favorite girl, Snooky, so. Call me. I don't know what you'd call me for liking Nagisa. Basic? <laughs> call me basic. I love Nagisa. Ah. Someone's gotta like the main characters. Yeah, I love Nagisa. Despite people thinking she's whiny. There was a surprising amount of Nagisa hate on the forums while I was researching this episode. Really? Yeah. Wow. I love Nagisa. But then again, if they've read the visual novel and checked up any other character, Nagisa is without, like, I'm saying without after story, <laughs> is kind of not good. <laughs> Comparatively. Nagisa is not my favorite character, but given her backstory, I find her personality and actions very fitting. Yeah, me too. And I think she's an okay enough character. Yeah. But moving on to the next character, Nagisa's dad, Akio Furukawa, he is the one of my favorite dads in all of anime. He radiates the 
same prankster energy that Tomoya does. We're doing it with a little bit of dad jokes. <laughs> and and the height and height only seen out outside of this anime in Kamina. <laughs> right? Kamina. He has height levels of Kamino from Gurren Lagan. Ah. All for his family. Right? He's like the family hype man. Akio is best dad. Yeah, he really Hands down. Hands down. Best dad in anime. Don't even at me about sh show talker. He puts his family first before everything. Yeah. And it's just... So touching to see. And you'll learn more about how much Akio loves his family in After Story. We've also got Sane. Sane. Sanai. Sanai. However Nagisa. you pronounce that. Sanai, I think. Who's Nagisa's mom. She's a lot like Nagisa. But if you say anything bad about her baked goods, she will cry. And run out of the store at high speeds. With Akio shortly following behind. Going, She's... I love you, Brad. She's a bit of an airhead. It's so cute. It. She's the... She's one of the cutest. In the anime. <laughs> the gag about her cooking being bad is a long-running joke in this show. The, the bakery gig goes from episode one all the way to the, through the second season. And surprisingly, it doesn't get old. It never gets old, because it's always a different thing that causes it. Right? Yeah. The setup's always different. <laughs> like, one time it could be the first time it's he tries something after wandering into the bakery, and he says, I can see why this hasn't sold. She cries and runs out the store, and Akio shows up, like, you motherfucker, it's an unspoken rule. People around here eat her baked goods and like them. <laughs> you don't say that stuff to her. I'm a murderer. You wait, you're from our daughter's school. <laughs> On the last Dude. episode that we watched, uh, Sunohara's little sister is in town and is helping out in the shop mm. and, and goes to eat one of Sanae's bait, baked goods and she's like, oh, how did you like it? And uh, Sunohara's little sister is like, they looked very good. And <laughs> Tomoya, and Nagusa, Tomoya and Nagisa are like, oh, wow. I had never thought to get out of the situation by saying that. Yes, it was very educational. <laughs> and it's just hilarious. Uh. Mm. Also, my favorite gig for after story, it's 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 one of my favorite version of this gig is when I'm I'm just gonna briefly tell you about this one. Alright. Tomoya and Akio are talking, and they're like, yeah, like, they're, they're just like discussing Sanai's bread because they're watching the shop, mm -hmm. and then Akio says something about the bread not being super delicious, because yeah. <laughs> he, he thought she wasn't around, and then she's like, Am I dead weight or something? And just starts crying out of the bakery, to which Akio grabs an entire basket of her bread and dumps it in his mouth and says, I love your bread, and starts chasing after her. Oh. Those goofballs. Them. Yeah. So, there is something that. Oh, yes. First of all, uh,. Let's talk about the, uh, that trippy, otherworld, girl in the robot thing. Oh yeah, the slight fantasy element. That's in every key anime. 
at the beginning of some episodes, we just start off in another world with a girl and a robot that she built. In a world that has ended, nothing exists. Just me and her. I had no idea what this was. I thought it was some trippy supernatural stuff. It sort of is, but it mostly is a thing that's brought up all throughout the anime up to last, up to a particular point in After Story. Based on the dialogue in those short scenes, and how sad you said After Story is, my theory was that perhaps the robot in those stories was Tomiya and Nagisa's future child that had died or something and gone to another world. I will neither confirm nor deny. Okay. I'm not gonna speak on this matter. I have not seen After Story yet, so... I'm not gonna speak on this matter, because I don't want to spoil you. Alright. But even that though, is my theory as gonna, of now. I'm not even gonna tell you how close you are. Am I close? I'm not gonna divulge that information. Okay. I'm not, but you know I'm loose-lipped. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how we go continuing on. <laughs> yeah. Having watched as much anime as I have. I'm usually pretty good at predicting what happens in a show like this. But this show, Clanad, kept me guessing every single step of the way. You're not even done with that journey. And I can't give it any higher praise. I could not predict this show. And that is what I love most about it. It's not predictable. Well, it's very all over the place. In a good way, right? Yeah. It's all over the place in a good way. But that's because our main character goes all over the place. It was unpredictable, but followable. Yeah. Emotional wonderful i cried like a bitch so many times oh yeah you know like i what what scene got to you the most if i can ask that scene in episode 22 akio with akio running into the auditorium and shouting to nagisa on stage i Oh, jeez. How oh, he just is like, make your dream come true. Your dream is our dream! In just the most dramatic way ever. <laughs> right? Oh, that was a beautiful moment. It was. I'm trying to find what it was, because it's beautiful. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I found it. We didn't give up on our dreams. We changed our dreams into your dream. Don't disappoint me or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and how... hmm? Nagisa's goal throughout the entire show was to reestablish the theater club. That it was. And... That plot point alone made me very excited, as I am one with a background of theater. I am sort of one with a background of theater. That makes sense. So, after 21 episodes, we finally come to the resolution of this story, and this portion of the story at least. Yeah, and start the long journey that is the next thing. And they finally reestablished the club. They wrote a play 
based on a story that Nagisa heard as a child. Which is suspiciously similar to the illusionary world. Yeah. The girl and the robot. Yep. And she had learned a secret that her parents were keeping from her her whole life about something that she did as a child and she blames herself for the path that her parents took afterwards but the play started the curtains raised and she froze on stage and started crying and because the only thing in her head was her father in a thing from the past saying theater is the best when i grow up i'm gonna be an actor but he had to give that up and she blames all of that on herself and she's just in her head so much she's frozen and her dad bursts through the doors in the back of the auditorium and yells this glorious speech and worthy of most theater nerds <laughs> right and that is my favorite moment in the show it's one of my favorite moments in this season but Akio is my favorite character in both seasons <laughs> he's a solid rock for his wife if he's got issues, he helps out his daughter and his daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> and many other things. He's just all around a great dude. I related to Nagisa so hard when she got stage fright. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So much stage fright. I... It used to be terrible. The, the pressure of all of those eyes looking on. Oh yeah. No, I agree. I did improv for a little while at a small theater. Mostly like 30-some seats. But still... It's a lot of eyes. Standing on stage under the spotlight. That's super uh, sweaty. Yeah, I know. Wait, Uncomfortable. We, we both have small theater backgrounds, which is interesting. Huh. I think we mentioned it a little in the not ever recorded Rakugo episode. Oh, yeah. But we both love theater, right? Oh, yeah. I've been did a f did a few productions in high school, but it was mainly choir for me. Mm. Elementary, middle, high school, even college. For me, it was my only improv, but I stopped doing it to pursue something I like a little bit more. Ah, I'd like and to do you... some improv someday. I could take you sometime get better at talking. I could teach you some improv. Alright. Like, like, later on, like, say, it, when we decide to just, like, hang out for a bit, teach you some improv exercises, do some with you, all that jazz. Cool. Because improv is one of those things I really, really love, but also firmly don't. It's all a matter of venue for me and audience. Yeah. Best way to say it is, I'm weird and nerdy, <laughs> and henceforth, the things I do during improv are weird and somewhat nerdy. Yeah. But let's talk, let's get back on track about Clanad. What's your favorite moment in the first season? In the first season? Next to one. Fuku's big sister at Kuko's wedding? Ah. I, it's that one, as well as when Katomi sees what her parents got her, and how it traveled all the way to get to her. Oh. Right? That's just amazing. Yeah. 
it, it's borderline impossible, and I love it. <laughs> I live for shit. I live for stories like that, dude. Which I'm not sure surprises you anymore. The more you get to know my tastes. Yeah. Cause, like, when you first knew me, would this type of show not be what you'd expect me to suggest? Definitely not. You are always talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, or... God, I love JoJo's. <laughs> or other Stuff. thriller horror movies and shows. I remember at one point we were watching an anime together, and I... Like, we were... Actually, this is while we were making the notes for... Watamote. And how I stopped for, like, show you the first few minutes of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> uh, I don't Which, do horror. Yeah, I mean, I do horror. A lot of horror. I'll do but psychological I, thriller, but so no monster, gore. Monsters, your line. No gore, no body horror. Okay. I like, I like existential <laughs> mysteries. Or Existential Dread? Yeah. Oh god, I love Existential Dread too. I've turned- I turned- so much so I accidentally turned my Minecraft recently into an Existential Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I removed the cubes. What? I removed the cubes. <laughs> Pardon? I removed the square parts from Minecraft. But that's Minecraft. It's flat now. Oh. But I digress. Back on topic. But, oh yeah, speaking of the music in Clan Ed, I love, love, love the music in Clan Ed. It listened it while I'm sad, happy. It's so, like, important to me that there some tracks I legitimately thinking about playing if and when I got married. Cool. Because it's just... Some of the tracks do have that vibe. Right? Yeah. But it's so super uplifting and stuff. Usually, I think we're at the stage where we usually talk about source material. Yeah. Oh, cover that. I did a lot of research on the source material. I'm just going to touch on a few anime things right now before you go into that. Okay. Uh, Clan Ad Season 1 consists of 23 episodes, and the anime ran from October 5th, 2007 to March 28th, 2008. And was animated by Kyoto Animation. Yeah. In case that wasn't mentioned in our intro. I'm still feeling that one. Yeah. Sorry I brought that up. No worries. But Clannad was originally a visual novel written by developed by a small studio named Key. And the people who being a visual novel, it requires a little bit more than the average manga, if you get what I mean. It, you need a writer, a composer, an artist, game designer. Yeah. Speaking of how Clannad has been, speaking about Clannad as a visual novel, it's getting, it's coming to the Switch relatively soon. Wow. But it's I, kind of, hmm? I might have to check it out. I would kill to get Clan Ed in English on the Switch. I'd kill to have that capability to play it on the go. Because I have issues playing visual novels on my computer. Huh. Even though I love visual novels. I'm not going to name some of the visual novels I like. 
because we all know what most visual novels are. Yeah. Despite Quanad and Katawa Shoryu being some of my favorite visual novels. I digress. But wanna know what's, what systems that Quanad came out for? Uh, what? PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Xbox 360, PS3, the Vita, and the PS4. And finally the Switch and PC. Jeez. I kind of yeah. thought it was just, uh... I, I expected PC and, uh, and PSP, but... Home console, was... really? Yeah! Home consoles! Huh. It was originally released in... 2002. Well, it was released April 28th, 2004. Yeah. It's very old. <laughs> right? The source yeah. material is very, very old. <laughs> By standards. Yeah. If that makes sense, right? Yeah. It. it if you're wondering what, what the original um, thing this ran on, it could run on, run on Windows XP <laughs> and Windows Vista. I'm not even kidding. Right. I ran this thing on, post, on toasters. We are running out of time. Right, right, right. Mm, moving on. Let's wrap this up. In the next few it. minutes. Okay. It was writ Planet was written by three writers. June Maeda, who is also one of the composers, Yuichi Suzimoto, and Kai. Whom I could not find a last name for for the life of me. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it was also created by, well, it was composed scenario assistance by Toyo Okano, scenarios being like stuff that happens. It was also composed by Jun Maeda, Shinji Ori Oruto, and Magome Toshi, and Itaru Hinoe. Alright. A lot of uh, fingers in the clan ad pie. <laughs> Also, due to the production, June Maeda was slapped with a whole bunch of the work, including the common route, three of the girls, and the soundtrack. But everyone in, in the production worked so hard, and it's one of the few visual novels I've actually paid damn near full retail video game price for. Oh. I bought it on Steam for forty dollars. Huh. The remastered version. Just thought I'd let you know. That's how much I love the series. But I think we should wrap up. Yeah. It's getting a little long, and I mean I could discuss Clanet all day, but I'm trying so so hard to dance around spoilers. I got one cool tidbit. Yeah. Is it different from my cool tidbit? Yeah. Oh, shit, let's mention those. Uh, during my research, I found that... Ryo Hirohashi, the Japanese voice actor for Kyo, is also the voice of Best Boy Mineta. <laughs> from My Hero Academia. Freaking Mineta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm... Oh my god. Best in show. Best in show. My fun fact for Clanad is that because they wanted to make it so different from their favorite, from their previous work, and changing, wanted to focus on themes of people and the town, yeah. it actually doubled the writing pro time because the writer actually wound up having to get stuck with a lot of the scenarios and he goes on record saying 
He put, equates the writing process of Clive to a wall that I will never be able to get over again. Oh. It so. was long. It's broken up in the school life arc and uh, which is essentially what we want, what we enjoy, and it's the studio's second longest running work. I'm not going to tell you how many words are in Clanad, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> many, many words. Many, many, many words are... are <clears throat> so, in general, I love this show. I, I, I don't know what more I can say that hasn't already been said. I mean, I have more things to say about the show, but that approaches spoiler territory for you. It was int It kept my interest, it brought me to tears more than once, and I couldn't predict the show. I couldn't predict plot points, it just was a fantastic experience. When can we do season two? I will be willing to do season two whenever you want. I may suggest it for my birthday. Ooh. If you want to do that. Uh, sure. If not, I'd be doing a different work. A little, also deep, near and dear to me. Alright. Instead. If you're still feeling that. But I'll leave you with another fun fact. Planet has more words in it than Harry- than the entire Harry Potter series. Oh, that is... Well, it has 1.2- 1.29 million English words. That's a little daunting. Yeah, a little bit of daunting. Can you see why it had multiple writers? <laughs> yeah. But why, why one who was saddled with only a couple routes, the main route said, <laughs> I, I don't want to do this ever again. Yeah. But we're going to wrap up now. Yeah. If you want to watch Clanad, you can catch it on Hulu, Verve, or Amazon. Or High Dive. Which is on Verve? Wait, it's on Amazon? Seems like it. Oh. You can also get the Blu-rays. Which yeah. I highly suggest. Support Perfect. Kyoto Annie. Yes. Support Kyoto Annie any way you can. Also... As... Hmm? Go ahead. I wasn't gonna say much other than... A lot of stuff was lost. Not just talent, but like a animation stuff, both digital and physical, was lost. Yeah. Sorry. As we move forward, keep them in your Thanks. thoughts and prayers. And donate to the GoFundMe to help them out. Yeah. I cried when I first heard about it. I cried more than Nagisa did when she was on stage. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. We've got to wrap this episode up now before we start crying. Yeah. I, I'm very liable to cry during this. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well. In the comments below and on our Discord. The night parade has now come to an end. Next week, Blue Exorcist. And thank you, Kyoto Animation. Thank you, Kyoto Animation.